charity? Well, CVS tells its employees to get a health screening or pay $50 a month. The move is supposed to encourage healthy habits while also saving them some money in health care costs. Many employers already charge smokers a surcharge for health insurance. Now there's concern companies that self-insure, like CVS, will add fees for other issues. There is the possibility that an experience rating, that you know, the, the personal attributes of that person could affect how much their premium uh, could be charged, once again in that self-insured uh, um, status. Well, as you might imagine, that raised some concerns over privacy and if this is even legal. With laws like HIPAA, Brandon Lewis joins us from our newsroom right now live. And Brandon, you found out it is legal in this case, but I think there is a fine line here. There is, Greg, because when you go to CVS through, say, fill a prescription, HIPAA laws apply. Now, the same doesn't apply to employees who are just working at the store or for any other employer. And as we found, it's a fine line that can be crossed when screenings get personal. Going to the doctor, you expect your health information to remain confidential. But in some cases, it's tough to get people in for regular checkups. With health care costs rising, CVS decided to tack on a fee to its employees for not getting a health screening to check for healthy habits. So my advice would be to, to read the uh, forms that are provided to the employees carefully and determine whether they're authorizing any use or disclosure of their health information. In a statement, CVS tells us all screenings will be handled by a third party and the information will be kept confidential. Still, there are some privacy concerns you need to think about before heading in for one of these screenings. Like a red flag is, is really asking about family uh, medical history. That starts to get closer to, you know, inquiring about maybe a genetic background or history in the family. So I think that that is a legal question that, that I think lawyers would be very sensitive to ask on a uh, health risk assessment. Ready, one, two, three. In most cases, it's safe to ask about healthy habits, weight, blood pressure, or cholesterol. Information from the screenings remains confidential, unless you say so. If the information is being collected by a third-party administrator, it is subject to HIPAA, and it cannot be shared with CVS as an employer unless the patient authorizes that disclosure. Now, typically, anonymous data is collected from wellness screenings as a way to lower health care costs. For example, if an employer shows it has 85 percent healthy employees, its health care risk is usually lowered, which means they save money. Now, the law typically protects employees from being fired for unhealthy habits as well. We're now live in the newsroom, Brandon Lewis, CBS 6 News. Thank you, Brandon. That brings us to tonight's CBS6Albany.com Talk 1300 web poll. We asked, do you think people who live an unhealthy lifestyle should pay more for health insurance? And the results at last check, well, there they are. 27% of you say yes, they should pay more, but 73% say no, they should not have to pay more for insurance. Thanks for voting tonight in tonight's web poll. Well, a pretty sunny day out there today and uh, taking a live look right now at downtown Albany. We can show you that... Uh, well, hopefully we have our live camera. Okay, we don't. Well, uh, you know what? Let's just head on over to Steve. He can tell us more about what it's actually like outside right now. Steve. It's pretty cold out there with some breaks of sunshine. 33 degrees now at Albany, and there's not much of a breeze, but our wind chills are generally running in the mid-20s, so no sign the cold is going to relinquish its grip anytime soon. We're into the upper 20s at 8 o'clock. Patchy cladiness, a couple of flurries around. They're mainly running across the north country. 15 tonight. So cold and cold again coming up tomorrow with temperatures in the mid to high 30s. Probably a little bit cloudier than today and a bit windier as well, Dory. So if anything, tomorrow feels, I think, a little bit colder than it did this afternoon. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Well, it looks like we are on our way to our third on time or early state budget in a row. But there are still some issues lingering between Governor Cuomo and lawmakers. Changes over the SAFE Act, the controversial gun law that was sped into law, remain a bone of contention. Also, school aid. New York City schools did not submit a plan for teacher evaluations by the state's deadline. Downstate lawmakers want the $250 million that districts lost to be reinstated. Then there's the matter of phasing out the state tax on your energy bill, that 18A assessment. Well, it'll happen over three years, but we still don't know just how much it will be cut down each year. This was another bipartisan agreement in the budget proposal. 
really the 18A assessment is a is a tax that's passed through to the ratepayers. It's the it's you know average families that are paying that. So again, we're providing tax relief at the bottom to the people who need it the most. So anytime you can take. Um, money or taxes off a utility bill, our utilities are way too high as it is. Um, this is a good thing. Uh, we would have liked to have done it all in one year, but obviously for fiscal reasons we couldn't, so it'll be phased over three. Meantime, down in Washington, a bill to prevent a government shutdown is on its way to the president's desk. The House signed off on legislation to keep the government funded through the end of September. It also patches a few holes, including more money for food inspections. Democrats and Republicans still remain far apart on a larger federal spending plan. The White House says that it will reveal its budget proposal on April 8th. Well, some lawmakers in Washington and in state capitals across the country want to raise taxes. Taxes can often drive people to move from one state to another and sometimes right out of the United States. Our national reporter Christine Frazau has more. Top-ranked boxing great Manny Pacquiao can stand up to almost any hook. Few bunkers can stop legendary golfer Phil Mickelson in his tracks. And comedian Bill Maher has made a career of laughing his way to the bank. In recent weeks, these multimillionaires have talked about changing zip codes because of rising state and federal taxes. Here in California, I just want to say, liberals, you could actually lose me. <laughs> it's outrageous what we're paying. They're paying too much taxes because they are making that much money. If you're going to make that much money, of course you're going to pay. The effect of millionaires and money can be felt in every state. Larry Hogan with Change Maryland, a grassroots group, analyzed what happened in his state after a millionaire's tax was created in 2007. We went from 11 Fortune 500 companies headquartered here to two. We lost 6,500 small businesses and 31,000 taxpayers. Change Maryland found that these higher tax rates drove out about two-thirds of the millionaires. The rest belong to the middle class. And then just about all of them fled for neighboring but less tax burdensome states. Hogan says more than one billion dollars a year was lost in earnings, creating a financial hole so large that his state has still not recovered. Uh, states that are cutting taxes or holding the line on taxes are actually the states where you're seeing the most um, private sector business growth and job growth. For some, America is no longer an attractive place to work. According to published reports, Manny Pacquiao has fought his last bout in the U.S. because the top marginal tax rate in Singapore is almost half what it is in Las Vegas. On a $20 million purse, the difference is about $4 million. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Puerto Rico is offering millionaires zero capital gains tax if they relocate to the Commonwealth. According to Bloomberg News, nearly a dozen wealthy Americans have already taken advantage of that offer. The police now say the man behind the deadly shootings last week in Herkimer County had a lot more ammunition at his disposal. Investigators say that Kurt Myers shot and killed four people and injured two more during a shooting rampage in Herkimer and Mohawk last Wednesday. The police say that Myers still had 50 rounds on him before officers shot and killed him following a standoff. They also say that Myers had another 45 in his vehicle, which was parked outside of the building where that standoff ended. One man is dead, another in the hospital after a house fire last night in Gloversville. Crews called around 9 p.m. to 34 Fifth Avenue. Police tell us that three children made it out safely, but 41-year-old Donald Larimore, who was visiting at the time, died in that fire. 66-year-old Marcus Van Slyke remains at the ICU at Nathan Littower tonight. Police say the home is a total loss and the cause remains under investigation. And an early morning fire in Scaticoke is being labeled suspicious. Crews called around 3 a.m. to this home at 158 Main Street. Investigators say the fire began in the garage, then quickly spread to the home. Everybody inside the house made it out safely, but investigators say the fire is suspicious because there's no electricity running inside that garage.